we finish this episode with a nice example for a transfer from mental practice in sports psychology to mental practice in surgery. This is a quite new research field, but it really makes sense because many movements, many scripts you have to follow in surgery are quite complicated and demanding and demanding movements. And especially for this kind of movement, mental practice seems to be helpful. And one of the first studies in which mental training or mental practice was tested in surgical education was the study by Mark Immenroth and colleagues published in 2007 in the journal Annals of Surgery. All in all, 98 surgeons participated in this study, which was conducted during a training course offered by the European Surgical Institute. At the beginning of the study, a pretest had to be conducted to see the baseline abilities of the surgeons. Um, therefore, all participants performed a videotaped laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which is the removal of the gallbladder using a mini camera. Of course, they were not practicing on real patients, they were practicing on a simulator which is called pelvi trainer. After this pretest, they were randomly assigned to three experimental conditions. The first group received on the one hand practical training. All groups received practical training, but in addition, this first group received mental training. On the first day, 90 minutes instructed by a experienced and also in mental practice experienced surgeon. On the second day, right before the post-test, a second 30-minute mental training session was conducted, again supervised by a experienced surgeon. So all in all, only 120 minutes of treatment. The second group received, as I said, also practical training plus more practical training while the other group received mental practice they received actual practical training just like the mental training group on day one they practiced 90 minutes but on the second day and this is probably the reason why in the post test this group was not better than the mental practice group on the second day they for example were just reading scientific articles for 30 minutes. So right before the intervention, they did not receive more practical training. The third group received also practical training, but no additional practical training. So this was the control group. After the treatment, the three groups again performed a videotaped laparoscopic cholecystectomy, the removal of the gallbladder. And as all these operations were videotaped, the experimenters could show these operations to other experienced surgeons who had no idea in which group the participants had been. So when they showed the videotaped operations to the surgeons, they said those participants who had practiced mentally were on average significantly better in performing some of the really important movements. They were not better in all variables that were assessed, but at least there were some trends. And I think these results are quite interesting, even though, as I said, the research field is still developing. I think it really makes sense because the movements you have to learn as a surgeon can be quite complicated, can be complicated like learning some demanding dance movements and therefore mental practice could be helpful even though of course surgeons and dentists already practice with a lot of simulators like for example the 
pelvic trainer that was used in this study. And this kind of real practical training is highly effective, but sometimes additional mental practice can have positive effects. Mm -hmm.